Question number five. Calvin Davis. Tonight we must the Speaker to the no Minister way. of Transport. Will transport spending in Northland return to the level that this government inherited, given annual NZTA funding for the region has fallen by 36 million since 2008 2009? Speaker. Honourable Simon Bridges. No, because to return transport spending to what the last Labour government spent, this national government would actually have to reduce spending, Mr. Speaker. And after neglect from Labor, we are spending $750 million to date, over 40 per cent more, some $30 million more each year on Northland uh, than the last government. Uh, so we are backing uh, the North. Uh, it, the, the member should not be cherry picking his figures uh, between years. He's uh, as tricky as Russell Norman on climate order, change. Order. Supplementary question, Calvin Davis. Mr Speaker, can he confirm that in 2008-2009 the Labor government budgeted £125 million on Northland Transport, whereas in the last two years his government has spent less than £90 million, and that's why communities like Pipiwai Titoki Avasi Group are sick of the excuses, sick of the threats from national MPs, sick of the bullying from national MPs... Order! Just ask the question. ..is their road sealed? Honourable Simon Bridges. Well, Mr Speaker, uh, what is clearly happening here is the member is cherry-picking his figures. How we, if he gets away from isolated uh, single-year examples, every year on average we've spent more, and in total we've spent more because we back the North. As I said in my primary answer, if we were to follow the approach of uh, the Labor government to Northern, we'd be spending a hell of a lot less there. Order, order. Supplementary question, Calvin Davis. Has he considered that Northlanders would prefer long-term regional investment in the, the transport priorities they identify, rather than be treated with contempt by panic bribes such as the double laning of bridges, especially when we now learn that these bridges might not even get built because NZTA says they're not worth the cost. Point of order, the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Uh, Mr Speaker, you've pinged Mr Bridges earlier, the Honourable Bridges, for uh, a comment at the end of his uh, question because it was political. But then, sir, uh, Calvin Davis in his questioning today has been extremely provocative, uh, using misinformation as well as other epithets to, to throw in the government direction. Order. Mr Speaker, that does not lead to order. Order. And, and I... Order. I accept the point the Minister's making. These questions start OK and then they become totally provocative and unnecessary and effectively out of order. I have two courses of action. I can rule the question out of order, in which case the member loses an opportunity, or I can allow the minister to answer and give the minister quite a lot of licence with his answer in view of the way the question... Order! I'd be grateful from the Honourable Ruth Dyson to acknowledge when I'm on my feet by giving a ruling on a point of order that she does not interject. On this occasion, I'll allow the Minister to answer the question. Mr Speaker, the member should quit while he's behind. I'd be embarrassed. I'd be... I would be embarrassed to be asking the sort of questions that he is asking. We have spent... Order. 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 Honourable Simon. It's great to see I elicit that kind of excitement from the opposition, Mr Speaker. I would be embarrassed to be asking the sort of questions he has when we compare our record in Northland on roads with that party's record. And we've got bridges coming up, we've got many other projects, and a highway that, unlike the opposition, we don't call the holiday highway because, like that member actually, we know it's what the people of Northland expect and deserve. Order, order, order. So before I call the member, I'll allow him to ask a supplementary question, but if it ends where the last two have ended, I will be ruling it out of order. Uh, Calvin Davis, supplementary question. Has he considered that if only National had invested in Northland's roads when it had the chance, rather than slashing spending, those 
roads might have carried national voters to the booths on Saturday rather than paving the way for an embarrassing defeat. Honourable Simon Bridges. This member should learn from Russell Norman, who at least knows how to misleadingly play with figures. What? <laughs> order. 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 I have a point of order from Attorney Two. Mr Speaker, you repeatedly uh, tell the opposition that they are not to make political points in their questions, and you allowed Mr Bridges to continue with that statement. I find it offensive. I would ask you that you take action consistently oh, across order. the House. Order. I'll hear from the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Order. This is an important matter. Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Well, Mr Speaker, surely you're not going to be put in a position of ruling that it's now inappropriate to offer compliments to other members in the House. Order. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that that comment helps me at all. The difficulty I have with Materia Toure's point of order is I've reminded Mr Davis not to ask questions that then uh, have a lot of political implication in them. He has completely ignored my advice now on three successive occasions. As I said, when I get a political question like that, I will give a lot of leeway to a minister in answering. It would be helpful when the minister does answer the question if he didn't refer to the uh, Dr Russell Norman in that way. Does the minister have to, uh, an answer? Oh, no, I'm on my feet. Does the minister have a, an answer to complete? Speak it. Oh, I have a point of order. Chris Hipkins. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, on a, a related but slightly different note, uh, there are some speakers' rulings around bringing parties that are not party to a question into a debate. Now, in this instance, yes, Kelvin Davis asked a political question and can expect a political answer. However, bringing an insult to another party into the answer is actually against order. what have been the speaker's rulings. I thank the member, and if he'd noted in my ruling to the minister and inviting him to continue, I address that point. Uh, listen, I'm getting to the stage when my patience will out. If it's a fresh point of order and it's relevant to the order of the House, order! Well, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Order! Speaker, I'm on my feet. I'm very inclined to be asking that member to leave the House. This is a point of order. I've said I'll hear it from Jerry Brownlee. I hope it's useful. Well, I hope it is too, sir. Uh, my point of order is the true offence, if Mr Hipkins had thought about it, uh, was the Honourable Bridges calling attention to a member who's not present in the House. Order. That's not going to help the order of the House either. Does Simon Bridges well, wish to let complete his answer quickly? Mr Speaker, let me treat the question very seriously. Under any credible basis, this government has invested more in roads in the Northland and in infrastructure than the last Labor government. And we have an ambitious program going forward of some $2 billion on roads that that party doesn't even support and dismissively calls holiday highways. Supplementary question, Ron Mark. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister. To the Minister, what is the amount of money taken out of Northland in road user charges and fuel excise duties relative to, relative to the amount of being reinvested back into Northland? Um, the Hon. Simon Bridges. Mr Speaker, I couldn't say offhand, but I have absolutely no doubt we invest more through central government and roading than we take out of the North. Supplementary question, Calvin Davis, and I do hope this one's within standing orders. Was it a good use of $17 million of public money to announce that 10 bridges would be double laned, given that Northlanders' priorities are flood spots, potholes, road slumps, and slips, which aren't being fixed because he has slashed? Northland's Order. road maintenance. Fund. Honourable Simon Bridges. Oh, Mr Speaker, no, and it's great to have confirmation that the Labor Party, yes, yes I should say, that the Labor Party is against every single roading project that we try and put ahead in the north. They call uh, Puhoi to Wellsford the holiday highway. They don't think that double, double lane bridges that the north know are vital lifelines should go ahead. They oppose, 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 and the North know that, and that's why their candidate they've thrown under the bus will come a very distant thir uh, third. Order. 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 Supplementary question, Ron Mark. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Further to the Minister's answers. Will the Minister give the House a guarantee that no rural provincial council 
will suffer a reduction in the percentage subsidy they currently receive through the government's funding assistance for rural roads in the financial years 2016, 17, 18 and 19. Will you give that guarantee? Honourable Simon Mr. Bridges. Speaker, well, the member is asking a very detailed, granular question that I'd want to go away and check. But let's be very clear, under the government's policy statement and the upcoming National Land Transport Programme, what, what we have done is made sure there is more money in every class, including in rural and regional roads. Unlike the last Labor government, we back the regions. Point of order, Ron Mark. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To be helpful, I seek leave of the house. Order. I seek leave of the house to table a table provided from New Zealand Transport Authority, showing that over the next Order. four, four fiscal, fiscal years, the FARS rate will be reduced for most Order. rural Order. councils. Order. Is that document available freely on the internet? It is. No. I no, no. Question number six, the Honourable Judith Collins. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.